Hello and welcome back, fans of all things creepy in the world, and also those of you who are like me and you don't really like scary things in life, but you also can't seem to stop watching them. I feel your pain. My name is Danny Burke, this channel is Most Amazing Top 10, and up here is a video I did quite a while back talking about scary places in the world, and I realised it was actually insanely popular. It got a lot of views, and I thought, why don't I just face my fears again and do another video on it? So here is the top 10 scary places you shouldn't visit part two. It's always me doing these kinds of videos. Ooh. Coming in at number 10 we have the Capuchin Catacombs. On the outskirts of Palermo in Italy lies the Capuchin Monastery which used to be run by a group of monks. Now in 1599 they ran out of room to bury their dead in their cemetery and so they started to excavate crypts below it. In that year they mummified and put on display the very first monk. Over the next few hundred years more and more dead monks were preserved there. Eventually members of the public were allowed to be buried there too. Often dressed in their finest clothes and the results are pretty horrifying if I'm honest. For the brave tourists who do go down there today the creepiest part is probably the most recent addition to the Capuchin catacombs, baby Rosalia Lombardo who died in 1920 aged 2. A century might have passed since then but time has left her remarkably well preserved. Sometimes visitors have even reported her opening her eyes. Nope, 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 nope. Moving on to number 9 now, we have St. George's Church in the Czech Republic. Would you guys want to spend a night here? Yeah, I thought not. The church was first built in the 13th century and over the hundreds of years since then, some of the locals began to think it was haunted. During a funeral service in 1968, the roof collapsed and people took this to mean that the church was cursed and they abandoned it forever. Then artist Jukub Hadrava stepped in and installed these creepy shrouded figures to represent the congregations of the past. These days, thousands of visitors to the church leave money to help pay for renovations, probably so that nobody else has to be creeped out in the future. Alright next up at number 8 now we have Chateau Miranda. At first it was a royal house before eventually becoming an orphanage in World War 2 and then being abandoned by the family who owned it. They told authorities they were not allowed to look after the building and since then it slowly started to look like something out of a horror game. Many people have lived and died within its walls and now that it's empty it's become known as Belgium's most haunted building. Ghost hunters say the crumbling corridors hold the spirits of lost wandering orphans. Storms and fires have tried to bring down this building since it was abandoned but Chateau Miranda still stands, calling out to the bravest ghost hunters. At number 7 now we have Belitzhalstaten. I wouldn't spend a single night here if you paid me. It's a ruined German military hospital that actually treated Hitler for a war wound when he was a soldier in World War 1. Now when the Soviets left it in 1995 the hospital was abandoned for good. On the outside nature slowly creeps in through the broken doors and windows. Inside outdated medical equipment looms over rusty beds. The only visitors today are people looking to experience the very creepy ghost town feel of the complex and see how much time has ravaged every single inch of it. Next up at number 6 now we have the Cabayan mummies. In caves in the northern Philippines lie mummies, some of which are thousands of years old. Now mummies are usually pretty creepy but these ones are even creepier because every mummy is entombed inside a pot, curled up in death and incredibly well preserved. The creepiest thing about these mummies is that the government knows the secret location of about 80 more of them in that area but won't tell anyone in case they end up getting vandalised. So guys if you're ever wandering through the Philippine hills at night and you stumble across a cave, now you know what might be inside. Coming in at number 5 now we have Skull Chapel in Poland. Usually a name like Skull Chapel is a bit exaggerated but when it comes to this place it's 100% accurate. Every inch of the walls and ceilings here are made up of the bones of people who died in wars in the 17th and 18th centuries as well as various plagues. This means the chapel itself is classified as a mass grave. The chapel was built by a local parish priest. The basement he built contains 8,000 skulls and bones from 21,000 people. There's even a crucifix with a carving of two angels and one has a Latin inscription that reads, Arise from the dead. Lovely stuff. It's funny how back then this was a great monument, but if some guy filled his basement with 8,000 skulls today, we'd be like, yeah, 
Come on, mate, let's get you a doctor and a jail cell. Moving on to number four now, we have the smoked corpses. If you go wandering through the mountains of Papua New Guinea and look up to the cliffs here, you might be in for a surprise. The Anga people still perform an ancient practice to honour their dead. Once a person passes away, man, woman or child, they are essentially smoked on top of a fire in the same way you would do with meat. The bodies are kept inside bamboo cages and it almost looks like they were trapped alive in there. Embalming techniques used before and after the fire actually preserve the bodies quite well and the Anga people leave their dead perched on these cliffs to watch out for potential invaders. This practice was banned in 1975 but in some remote villages it's thought that corpses are still being smoked to this day. Coming in at number 3 now, we have the Matsuo Ghost Mine. In northern Japan lies one of the biggest mining complexes in the whole of Asia. At one point, 15,000 people lived there, making it very densely populated. When the mining dried up, the mine closed in 1972 and the thousands of people left almost overnight. The place was left alone, in the mountains, cut off from the rest of the world. Paranormal hunters from around the world visit Matsuo Mine to experience this isolated place where so so many people once lived and then left, claiming to still feel the energy they imprinted. Even if you don't believe in all that kind of stuff, the fog is perhaps the most scary part here. At times, it engulfs the entire town in this ghostly looking mist. Even the 11 storey buildings get swallowed up by it, and any brave visitors that might be inside. Next up at number 2 now, we have Torja in Indonesia. At first glance, nothing looks out of the ordinary here, but everything changes once every 3 years. That's when the ritual of the Manani takes place, otherwise known as the ceremony of cleaning corpses. This event involves the locals digging up the corpses of their loved ones to wash and dress them in new clothes as their coffins are repaired. Now, This all comes from their belief that their dead should be admired, loved and respected even after death. Even babies are included in this ritual as you can see here with the skeleton of a dead baby with a fresh dress on. Now, To be fair, this is totally a cultural thing and it's part of their tradition but it made it onto the list because I imagine that most of you guys watching this wouldn't want to find yourself in this village on the day of the corpse cleaning. Pretty scary stuff. And finally at number one, we have the Old Jewish Cemetery. That's actually its real name and it can be found in the city of Prague in the Czech Republic. People were first buried here back in the 15th century, but as the years went on, the lack of space there became a real problem. It's estimated that there could be up to 100,000 people buried here. And you guys might be wondering, how is that possible? It doesn't look that big, does it? Well, that's because they are layered. When they run out of space on the first layer, they would just add a new layer of soil and move the gravestones up one layer. In one part, there are even up to 12 layers of graves just stacked on top of each other. They finally run out of space in the late 18th century and stop burying people there and it's become a Jewish heritage site. Personally, graveyards creep me out a lot, so 12 of them stacked on top of each other sounds like my kind of nightmare. But what do you guys think? And what do you think of all the places on our list? Did this make you want to go visit these places? If we go together, will you please hold my hand? Do you want a part three? You can answer any of those questions. Any of them. My name is Danny Burke. Thank you as ever for watching Most Amazing Top 10, and I'll see all you guys in the next one.